In this video, we're going to take a look at solving proportions. Remember that proportions are just two ratios that are set equal to each other. And when we have that, the cross products are also equal. So we can use that fact to solve for variables if we're given three of the four pieces that make up a proportion. Let's go ahead and solve some of these proportions. Let's start with this first one. Our cross products are going to be 26 times G and 28 times 81. So, tw or excuse me, 36 times G. So, 36G is going to be equal to 28 times 81. And then we'll go ahead and do that multiplication. So, we have 36G equals 28 times 81. Let's just grab our calculator here. 28 times 81, which is 2,268. And finally, get that G by itself. We're solving, remember, so divide by 36 and divide by 36, and we end up with G equals, let's use our good old calculator here, divide by 36, and we're left with 63. Okay, so uh, again, just setting those cross products equal to each other. Let's look at another one. Here's our cross products again. 3n and then 1.05. So we have 3n is equal to 0 0.6 times 1.05. Okay, again, let's just grab our calculator and figure out what exactly that is. So 0 0.6 times 1.05, and that's 0.63. So 3n equals 0 0.6. Oops, 0 0.63. Okay. Finally, again, divide by three, and then we get n equals. Divide that by three, and I believe we're going to get 0.21. Sure enough. All right. 0 0.21. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, some that maybe are a little bit scarier looking, but we can handle them too. Just remembering that we have to multiply by everything that's there. So, our cross products in this one are going to be 5 times 56 and 8 times F minus 1. So, we have 5 times 56 equal to 8 now. It's very important that we put, if there's more than one term here, we need to put that in parentheses and then we're going to have to distribute that 8 through because it's 8 times this whole thing, not just 8 times the F. That's probably one of the most common errors that I see is that people just want to multiply the F. Well, we need to multiply by the whole thing that's there. So on the left hand side we have 5 times 56 which is going to be 280 so we have 280 is equal to and then we're going to distribute that 8 through so 8 times F and 8 times negative 1 or minus 1 gives us minus 8 okay again now we're to something that hopefully looks familiar we're going to go ahead and add 8 getting that F by itself so we have 288, oops, I'm getting a little ahead of myself there, equals 8F. Then we're going to divide by 8, divide by 8, and we're left with F equals 288 divided by 8 gives us 36. Okay, let's take a look at just one more here. And then we're going to take a look at an application of when we can use proportions to solve some, some problems. So, again, cross products. In this one, we have 5 times 12. That's going to be equal to 4 times all of this. So, remember to put it in parentheses, 4 times V plus 6. So, after we do that start uh, working it down so 5 times 12 is 60 equals distribute this through 
So we have 4v, and then 4 times 6 is 24. All right. Again, our goal is to get that variable by itself. So we're going to get rid of this 24 by doing the opposite, of course. Subtract 24 from both sides. There we have 46. No, excuse me, 36. Hooey. Okay, so we have 36 equals 4v, divide by 4, divide by 4, and we're left with v equals 9. Okay, so we know how to solve proportions. Now let's use them. So let's say we have this situation um, where we have a um, situation where we have a person standing and they're casting a shadow and we want to find out something. And let's just maybe draw a picture. That'll help us understand what exactly is going on here. So we have Billy, first of all, who's six feet tall. All right, so here's Billy, six feet tall. Okay, currently with the sun, Billy is casting a shadow that is 16 feet long. Okay, so we've got Billy, he's six feet tall, his shadow is 16 feet long. And I got a little cut off here, but at the same time, it's supposed to say, a tree casts a shadow that's 80 feet long. So over here, we've got a tree. There's our tree. And the tree shadow is currently 80 feet long. We want to know how tall the tree is. Well, this, this can work really cool, actually. If you want to go outside and measure some trees, the height of trees, they're not easily to measure directly, but using shadows and proportions, we can figure out exactly how our darn close, anyway, depending on how accurate our measurements are, how tall that tree is. So we need to set up a proportion. And there are actually four different ones that we could set up. The key is that we need to be consistent. So let's say I want to use the Billy's stuff first. So if I do 16, or excuse me, 6 over 16, the 6 is Billy's height, the 16 is the shadow. So then for the tree, the 6 was the height, so I need to put the height of the tree on top. So that's going to be X. Then I put the shadow on the bottom, which is 80. Okay, So I was consistent. On the top we have the heights, and then on the bottom we have the shadows. Another way I could set it up if I want is to use both the heights in the same ratio. So 6 over x, so we have Billy's height over the tree's height. And that would be equal to Billy's shadow over the tree's shadow. Again, just being consistent. So on top we have Billy's stuff, on the bottom we have the tree's stuff. Notice, in each of these, the cross products are the same. 16x, 16x, and 6 times 80. And there's actually two more that we could write that are variations of that. But let's solve one of these two that we have sitting here. So we have 16x, I'm just going to flip colors quick so we can see. So 16 times x, that's going to be equal to 6 times 80, which of course is 480. Then I'm going to divide by 16 on both sides. Divide by 16, and we get x equals 30. Now, 30, what's that? Oh, okay, here's my x. So 30 feet. So that means my tree is about 30 feet tall. Uh, to me this is one of the coolest applications of proportions just to how you can measure stuff that isn't easy to measure in real life or if we want to find those heights using shadows and proportions. I hope this was helpful. Remember solving proportions the key is that we're finding cross products and setting those equal to each other then it should be something that we're familiar with solving. Hope this was helpful again, and uh, practice makes perfect on your math, so keep after it.